Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Dunbar once again covering COVID-19 from my house here in Keller, Texas. It's good to have you. We have Governor Greg Abbott standing by. We're going to speak to him in just one moment. First, I want to get you updated on the latest numbers that we get for some context and perspective this afternoon. Latest numbers, Dallas County reporting 64 new cases for a total of 367. Tarrant County, they are up 14 cases from yesterday. They have a total now of 114. Collin County has 88. Two of the new cases are employees, we're told, with the Plano Police Department. Denton County has 137 cases in all. And that's 54 new cases since yesterday, by the way. 31 of those are at the state-supported living center in Denton, which you may have heard about by now. The campus provides housing and care for more than 400 mentally challenged adults. And they have 1,400 employees there, so a hot spot to say the least. I mentioned Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, thank you for joining us this evening for CBS 11 News at 6. Uh, we have a lot to get to, so let's dive right in, if we may. Let's talk about the fact that we don't sure. have a statewide set of restrictions right now. And you explained the reasoning behind that just the other day, because so many counties in Texas out of the 254 aren't dealing with COVID-19, thankfully at the moment. But now as the caseload has gone up, there's 105 at last check that I saw uh, counties now dealing with at least something related to COVID-19. Would you consider now either a state approach or maybe even a regional approach instead of where we stand right now with kind of a patchwork of restrictions from municipalities? Sure. Sure. Just to be clear, uh, there actually is a statewide order and uh, plan in place. Uh, it is my executive order uh, that I issued a week ago, last Friday, actually last Thursday. Uh, and under that order, that's what shut down all the bars and, and restaurants in the state of Texas, but leaving restaurants open for delivery or for pickup. It shut down all the schools in the state of Texas. Uh, it shut down any access to anything like senior living facilities, as well as uh, making sure that we limit gatherings of more than 10 people. So uh, that set a standard, but very important that your audience knows what that standard is based upon because it will foreshadow what the future will provide. That standard is based upon doctors and data based in part on the doctor leading the state effort, Dr. Hellerstedt, who's in charge of the state health services. But also, uh, as governor, uh, I have weekly calls with Dr. Burks uh, and Dr. Fauci. Doc those are the two doctors at the podium with the president talking about this coronavirus on a daily basis. And so we uh, make our decisions on the advice of all these doctors, and those doctors make their decisions based upon the data. We will be having uh, another meeting uh, with Dr. Burks, with the president, next week, uh, where we will be getting new guidelines uh, to determine what the future will look like in the state of Texas. That said, as we are talking tonight, 75% of the state is now living under standards that are heightened, even more restrictive than my executive order. Uh, it's the stay in place, stay at home standard. And so 75% of the population in the state of Texas is living by the highest standard that exists in the country and is having a very positive effect by achieving our collective goal to reduce the spread of coronavirus in Texas. And, and again, there are a number of mayors here in North Texas, candidly, who have wondered aloud and, and spoken to us about the fact that they would rather they would rather see a more regional approach, perhaps coming from your office when it comes to the stay at home order. Well, the, the way disaster declarations work is they, they work at the county level. So the, the, the governor will make a decision uh, and it applies uh, for county base level. But that aside, the practices that are taking place in Texas that your viewers are doing right now by being at home watching this on TV are the practices that are the subject of my order as well as, I assume, local orders. And they're doing exactly what we need to do, and that is to slow the spread of coronavirus. And understand this, while we're doing this slow the spread strategy, we're also implementing other strategies as we're speaking right now. We are dramatically increasing the amount of testing that is taking place. Since last Friday to this day, we've increased testing by 1,000 percent. And then on top of that, we are, through this process, looking at all the data, we're working to flatten the curve in the state of Texas. And then at the very same time, uh, we're working every single day to increase the amount of health care capabilities that we'll, we will be able to provide local communities just like those up there in the North Texas region. 
And Governor, may I ask you, you brought up testing. We have reported on almost a daily basis, we have two test sites in uh, Dallas specifically uh, that have basically closed down middle of the day each day because of the federal mandate that they can only uh, do 250 tests per site per day. Is, is that just the way that's going to be? Because there's, there is a thought, obviously, and, and you have vocalized as well, that there may be far more people infected out there that, that, that we know about. But yet at these sites right now, because of the federal mandate, they can't go beyond 250 a day. But understand this. This is very important for your audience to know. Uh, and that is, uh, first, we're talking about collection, not the testing. Well, you first collect the specimen, and then it's sent to a lab for the testing. On, on the collection side, there are multiple different ways that the collection takes place. One is through these drive-throughs. Some of those drive-throughs are provided by private health care facilities there in the North Texas region. Some are these FEMA-funded uh, uh, FEMA setups, and it's the FEMA-funded strategies that you're talking about, but those are not the only drive-through strategies that exist in North Texas or other parts of the state of Texas. Then in addition to your, your private health care provider, in addition to the FEMA-funded strategy, there's also the public health strategy where your public health authority uh, has both the collection capability as well as the testing capability. Bottom line is that we've had this 1,000% increase, meaning a tenfold increase of collection and testing over the past week. We will continue to expect that same level of increase going forward. And Governor, last question. Our schools, uh, the administrations, the districts have all become heroes in trying to keep the learning going for all of our kids. Simple question that comes from almost every parent I have talked to in the last couple of days, and that is, do you think our kids are going to go back to school this academic year? It, it, it may depend upon what region of the state somebody is in. In uh, what I'll call the North Texas region, uh, is, is hard to say right now. I can tell everybody watching, we will be receiving a national update from the White House early next week about what the next steps are in this process of responding to the coronavirus. We need to wait and see what comes out because what is going to come out at that time is going to be based upon the data that they are seeing in Texas, but also that they are seeing nationally that they can build trend models out of. Let us get this new data in so we can see. One last thing really quick about the data that's so important for your audience to know, and that is of all yes, these sir. different people who are being tested in Texas, le less than 10 percent of them test positive, less than 10 percent who test positive have to go to the hospital. So these are good results for people to understand that just because this disease is out there doesn't mean you're going to face a challenge per se. Governor, you are gracious to share your time with us live tonight to uh, inform people who have so many questions. We could spend an hour, and we both know that, but we do appreciate your time. Governor Abbott, thank you so very much. Thank you. Governor, Governor Greg Abbott tonight.